Hi, this is just a little test run which I'm uh, doing on the slate today rather on the large computer. Uh, I thought I'd do a quick demo, a very quick demo, uh, just uh, sketching cubes in space just as an indication of a sketch perspective. Uh, it's just as applicable to hand-drawn images but on this occasion we're using uh, Sketchbook Pro again because it's a rather user-friendly uh, program uh, both in terms of uh, uh, its accessibility for students on the computer and uh, its relationship to hand-drawn images. It's, it's got a very simple tool set. All we've done in this particular case is uh, created a couple of layers. We've done a quick pencil sketch using the pencil tool just to rough out the perspective. And just remember the key issues here in terms of the perspective is convergence. Okay, So that means that when we have any parallel lines going backwards in space, they have to come back, even just roughly speaking, just intuitively, they have to converge back to a common point somewhere in the distance. That will give you the illusion of a, a three-dimensional surface. The first one we've done here is just a very quick rough conceptual sketch to mimic the exercise uh, you, you should be able to do in class. You can see it's the same as uh, what you'd be getting if you were using just a straightforward uh, grey marker. Just a gradation of tone in order to convey the light source and it's as simple as that. The other critical thing in terms of composition with this, these cubes in space exercise is uh, just simply by overlapping one three-dimensional form behind the other, you create the illusion of depth in any composition. So this second one is just a little bit more polished version using a slightly different tool set. We've used uh, the straight edge tool. So in class, you could quickly lay this out with a little plastic ruler. And you can see that we've got a gradation of tone as we go across the surface to give a sense of light washing over any surface. And we have a tonal range such that it reinforces that sense of light and shade. And we don't smother it with, uh, with a rendered surface. just lightly and loosely implied, it's more uh, an indicative feel for the form and it's the speed of presentation here which is critical. Uh, in order to use these sort of hand-drawn skills in the design process, it's really at the opening stages of, of the design process so it's a matter of getting ideas down on the page or on the screen as quickly as possible and it's the mass of ideas that we're looking for rather than a photorealistic finish. We'd sooner have 20 reasonable ideas and then be able to refine our design and struggle with one bad idea for days on end, only for it to be thrown in the bin at the end of the day. Just trimming off the loose edges here and there. You can see it's a very simple process and it clearly mimics just the hand drawing skills that you've uh, no doubt been practicing yourself at this stage. So you can sort of see there's a blurring here between uh, the digital realm and the analog, which is as it should be. Just blurring out the edges, so it gives a more rendered sort of feel rather than a uh, pen and ink sketch. And then a few edge highlights to convey a slightly reflected material. And then we drop in a background, just so we're working with a mid-tone. A little bit of ground shadow, float the composition, and basically as simple as that, just a very easy sort of exercise to get you uh, warmed up, get you familiar with the software, or conversely, if you just are relating this back to a hand drawn sketch, the process methodology is uh, basically the same. Okay, and once you've done these basic geometric shapes, you can do uh, build to more complex products from there. Okay, good luck to everyone. Bye.